Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. I'm your host Paul Jasson. Thank you for joining us and uh, as we're now into the spring at today as we tape the show today it looks more like a beautiful summer day in Lancaster. Uh, tremendous weather, tremendous warmth coming so we're glad we can see the flowers coming up. Where Scythias have bloomed we all know what that means so we hope that's not the case. We don't want to see a couple more snows here coming very soon but we'll see how that works out. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us today and uh, our first guest is uh, the head of the theater department out of Ohio University Lancaster and for more than a decade uh, they've had such a, a rich and varied tradition out there it's just been one of the real high spots in the cultural aspect of Lancaster when you talk about all the museums the Lancaster Festival everything we have certainly Ohio University Lancaster is such a gem to the community but I think particularly and that's what we'll talk about today is the theater department I just want to call him <laughs> Victor Jones that's all I want to say Victor thank <laughs> you for joining us thank you for having me um, it's been an unusual time it has. since last we talked yes, a it lot is. going on and there's no guest I've had on in the last year or however long it's been that COVID hasn't entered into the conversation in some way. That's correct. It, uh, every business, every nonprofit, everything we've done, COVID has affected it. Yes. And in and, and all ways, not, not negative. I think what we've seen in some cases, and you may tell us that, is some of the changes that many of the businesses and nonprofits have had to make. I think some of those will carry over if this were all to be gone today like some of the places they found out maybe being at home and doing some of that at home is better for yeah. our business i don't know if any of that has worked out for you i know you're zoomed out i'm sure you've <laughs> had so many zoom meetings you don't want to do them but have you learned anything in this past year about um, that i have oh <laughs> i have um it's it was exciting and new and fresh and all those wonderful things in the beginning. That uh, wore out quick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it was also became like teaching acting for television and film at one point. So we did adapt and it became an interesting concept, but I think we're all ready to get back to to celebrating yeah. meeting in person and doing yeah. all those wonderful things. Yeah, and uh, really one of the reasons I had uh, Victor on with us today is uh, coming up this weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday, Sunday, and I love this. Romance, no man's, <laughs> a slightly romantic comedy. That is going to be an unusual play, I think. It is going to be an unusual play. It, it wasn't the first plan. This was plan mm. B and C, maybe. <laughs> um, the students and I um, had another play in mind uh, in honor of the celebration of me being at the university for 10 years. Last year, Last year was 10 years. Uh, this January, though, we were going to revisit the very first show that I pr produced and directed back in 2010 or 11, uh, 2011, which was called Final Dress Rehearsal. And that was one of your very first... The very first oh, show we okay. ever did. Okay. Uh, to see if people were interested in supporting theater and doing theater and what students auditioned for the show. So we were going to redo that with an all-new cast and we were all excited to do about it. Um, some bumps in the road didn't work out as we had hoped it would. Uh, so then we began exploring some interesting things uh, re about sketch comedy and uh, the traditional I Love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke, um, all Real the classics. Carol Burnett show those classics. classic things we began doing improvisations in the in the class role playing as we prepare to work on a comedy that we were going to choose to do uh, and it evolved into romance no a slightly romantic comedy that is it's it's an amazing title and as i've been reading about it uh the young people that are in this are the people that wrote it that's exactly right it's is starting, that unusual it's yes Probably because it's written by all nine cast members. That's it crazy. It started as a um, an assignment in class. Yeah. Uh, to create a, uh, a two person scene, all about dating in today's environment. Sure. So that's how it was. Their inspiration was the classic television comedies. Um, they didn't know that this was going to be a show when we were doing it in rehearsal and on Zoom and all this and doing the improvisation. It was just an exercise. Uh, and as it developed more and more and more, 
and knowing that our choices of what we could actually do on the Wagner Theater stage were it seemed almost hopeless at first because theater has been hit so hard yeah, and still the arts, not open in most and, places right and the arts have been impacted oh, yeah. so much by this that we didn't think this was going to happen but when there's a will and a way and a desire and you're passionate about something uh, and you can appreciate all those wonderful things and and then you realize the gift that you had before this of us being a family working together performing live on stage was taken away and were we going to get that opportunity to come back and be a part of this and do it again this spring? We, we didn't know. Um, but this exercise of Romance Nomance developed. And then on Zoom, I said, guys, guess what? We're going to create an original play using the material that you started to work with. Did you send out shockwaves? <laughs> they did. They looked, they looked at me. <laughs> because on Zoom and in rehearsals, oftentimes when they know it's just a classroom exercise, they're unfiltered. Yeah. Yeah. So the moment you say we're going to do this in front of an audience, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. Now there's it's a little for bit real. of filter that comes up. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So, but it, it's delightful. You you think of it as the Carol Burnett Show meets Saturday Night Live or Second City, and you involve young people and their terminology about dating online and blind dates and all that. Did I read where this is PG-13? It is PG-13. So a little stuff in it. Due to adult language and some content, some material may not be suitable I for all you. audiences. I got you. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be hilarious. It's a hoot. And it's this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Friday, Saturday, I Sunday. I mean, sorry. That's Friday, okay. Saturday, and Sunday. And how can tickets be purchased? Uh, you can go to the university website, ohio.edu forward slash Lancaster. You just click on the link. It's $15 for one streaming device. Yes. So you could gather safely, safely gather your friends and family at home um, and watch this. Um, and you'll get a code saying how to watch it once you purchase the yeah. ticket. Do you think that will be make a difference to the performers? Yes, with it did. Nobody there because I, yes. you you see lots of shows now that uh, that would normally have it if you're on TV maybe a small audience or a bigger audience they don't do it so they've learned to do it without it. These people have never done that so will that be a new experience for it them? It was totally a new. We filmed it um, on Thursday. Yeah. So what's unique about this is that there is no audience, there is no laugh track. There isn't that crowd that you would hear on a sitcom where they had, you know, they pipe sure. in the laughter. Sure. So that is extremely unusual because you don't get the punchline. You don't know if the audience is with you. Right. You're feeding off How the audience. How long do you wait till the laughter dies down? You're exactly right. Are they laughing? Do they think it's funny? <laughs> Are they laughing? Well, are they laughing at home? We hope so. We hope we bring some joy. And it really is about joy and having fun when you're actually watching the show. Well, it's, it's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, for the last year, and I think in a normal year, other than last year for your first 10 years here what have you done three plays a year three to four shows a year and yes. the lancaster festival and the lancaster which, festival which yes. was all pushed aside yes for, for last year now we're back into it you're starting the year out with your first play is this about when you'd have your normal first play it is okay it is our spring so show. you're back on schedule now and i understand that you've got something good for the festival this year you're planning we have an exciting announcement coming up yes uh, i don't want to share too much so this is a tease okay we're working on something really special that wow. that people wanted and we're disappointed that um that we weren't able to move forward with it but it's something really special that includes alumni and community members and current students so i don't want to give too much sure. away that's a big enough tease. And, well that's gonna be good we're gonna have deb connell on here in a couple weeks and we'll talk to her because i know she's excited to to be getting she never thought in her almost her first year or so she'd be canceling the entire festival but now in some form it's coming back and part of that will be uh the normal some normalcy with OUL. Yes, we hope so. Yeah, we hope so. We, we hope so. We understand there's still a lot of changes. The governor's still almost on a weekly basis. Things are lightening up now. And of course, now we hear things about other variants of the COVID coming. Right. So you don't know what will happen. It'll be interesting to follow this. And we hope for the best here. So, uh, gee, it's exciting to have this all back again. I'm sure you're ready and, you're, it, and your young people are it ready. It is. It was interesting because the first part of the semester, we were all on Zoom doing all the classroom, all the acting and everything on Zoom. Uh, once we got the go ahead to move forward with the show, beginning in March, we all started meeting face to face. That began COVID protocol, COVID testing weekly, all those things came in place. The students had to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'm blessed to say and lucky enough to say that all of our test results during the whole four or five weeks that we did it were all negative. Oh, good for you. We followed all the safety protocol. The students wore their mask. Our show was filmed with clear mask and a second mask on top. Uh, social distancing is in place, six feet apart. So all those things were thought about as we developed and sure. created the show. So, so really, you had to really comprehend COVID and how this is going to be required to move forward. You had to do a lot of we extra thinking on this. There was this. a lot of extra thinking, Planning. preparation and advancing. Yeah. We wanted the audience at home also to feel comfortable with what they were watching. Sure. We didn't want to have them think, oh, are they practicing social distancing? Oh, they're too close to all these wonderful yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, how do you do this in a, a show about dating? And hopefully we did it well and everyone's going to have a really good time and, and find some comedy and fun in it also. Is there some talk in this about social, about social distancing and the mask? Is any of that so come in, into play? In the creating of the show, we initially had a scene, some scenes that involved it. Mm -hmm. Through our work with the students, because they created this, yes. I followed their lead. I was really the producer, director, but they created their so own So you material. directed it? I directed okay. it, gave them feedbacks, yes. gave them suggestions, all right. those things, but it is sure. their work their writing. Um, they wanted to stay away from it. They felt that the mask was, were enough to say we're in enough. the COVID timeline. Yeah. We've all been so much bombarded with all this bad news and, and not being able to see our friends and family. Yes, it's there, but we don't talk about it yeah. and it's not the plot of the yeah. show. And, and now that you've taped it and you've done it, and I'm sure you've watched it since. since I have not watched it yet. Really? Yes. I'm looking forward whatever, to seeing whatever it. Whatever is there is there. <laughs> we did it as live theater. We did not edit it. If there was a mistake, it's there. If they had to improvise to get out of it, it's there. We wanted a live theatrical experience, and that's what they're going to get because it's live from start to finish. How did the young people feel about all this when it was done? That's the weird part because when you leave, you don't know if you were funny. That's the part because there's silence everywhere. Yeah. So they thought they did well. The, um, you know, um, there were some things that I would that um, they were like, oh, I could have done this better. But I thought they were brilliant. I thought they handled everything really well. Um, it's a unique experience to do something like this. And it's the it, first time for all of us. And it probably took a, a, a special kind of young person to put all these people together to make all this work because this is something nobody had ever planned on. No, we had never planned on this. Um, so it was, they handled it well, they handled it beautifully. They were such good professionals. Uh, the day that we went to film, you know, whenever you go to film a movie or anything like that, you know, they, they want you at eight o'clock in the morning and then something goes wrong and you don't actually start till 12, one or two, you're sure. just sitting around the set. We had that experience taping this show. Uh, something went wrong right at the beginning, technical. We got it solved within an hour. They held up their energy, got through it, and they did an Push excellent through. job. It's called Romance No Man's, a slightly romantic comedy. It's going to be a hoot. It's this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday out at Ohio University Lancaster. Our guest has been Victor Jones, the artistic director, the, the drama guru out at o OUL. And this begins your 11th year. My 11th year, 11th yes. 11th year is out here, and, and they have such a wonderful reputation. And they're going to be involved in the festival again. So we're excited about all this. Uh, we look forward to this first one and uh, the first you. of three and a festival. So yes. I hope we're back on schedule. Thanks so much for all having right. me. Victor Jones from Ohio University Lancaster. We'll be back in just a moment. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. We were uh, retiring from Tucson, Arizona, and we made a retirement trip out around Ohio, having decided that's where we wanted to be. And we came across this town called Lancaster, and we fell in love with the downtown area, where the fountain is, and the memorials, and the flags, and, and all this stuff. And I looked around and I said, there's our bank, right there. There's something to be said about a, a community bank in your hometown. Right. If you live in the community, you should do business in the community as much as possible. So it makes sense to bank with the community bank that you, where you live. Fairfield Federal is the bank to be at. If, you're a bit, if you live in this town, or any town actually, you want to bank at a local home bank. And the employees are happy here, they're conversant, customer service is through the roof. There's nothing more you could ask for. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you.
Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. The moment that you're told that you have cancer, so many things were going through my mind. I had this pain that kind of doubled over and FMC got me the help that I needed, so I ended up surviving. Fairfield Medical Center has helped me get through what was the hardest six months of my life. When I first came to Fairfield Medical Center, she was probably having an allergic reaction. They saved her life, and that's why she's here today. Welcome back to Fairfield Today. I'm Paul Jasson, your host. I want to thank Victor Jones for stopping by. An exciting time for OUL, getting kind of back online and, and getting things somewhat normal. One of the one of the places that now as we kind of get, get back to some type of normalcy that they're able to have their first play at, at this weekend, so we're excited about that. We'll, we'll kind of stay in maybe the artsy, but maybe the education aspect of it. We're going to talk about bit of luck. And for those of you who may not uh, know what that is, this is the big fundraiser that Fisher Catholic has each year that funds their entire school year. And it's a pleasure to have with us the principal, Jim Globacar. And Jim, thank you for joining us. No, thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Uh, it's an exciting time. First of all, let's just talk about the schools. I yeah. mean, uh, I talked with Steve Wigton uh, <laughs> periodically about what it meant for Lancaster, and I'm sure it's the same with you. Uh, you didn't sign on for all this, but you're kind of caught in the middle of it, and it's been certainly a, a transitional year, an interesting year for Fisher Catholic. You guys have really, through it all, pushed through. Yeah, we have. Uh, you know, Steve has a lot tougher job than I do. Uh, he has a lot more kids, a uh, lot more schools to deal with here, here in Lancaster. But um, for us, uh, we always want to get our enrollment higher. But this year, having the number of students we have, about 160, we were able to push forward five days a week. Um, our kids really didn't lose out on maybe a pep rally or two, but other than that, they didn't lose out on any of their education, and uh, we're looking forward to, to being able to do all the festivities for our seniors here in the next month and a half uh, that the seniors last year, unfortunately, weren't able to, to now, do too much. At this point, and I know things can change, but at this point, how will graduation look? Uh, at this point, we'd be allowed to have 25% uh, capacity in our gym, okay. which is actually more people than we were able to have for volleyball or basketball games. Uh, oh. So, and with our graduating senior class is 41 students. So uh, that allots them a number of tickets each for graduation. So it'll actually, um, as of right now, look pretty normal. And if, if things happen to loosen up here in the next month and a half, it could be completely normal. So a bit of luck is coming up. That'll be up here in a couple weeks. What was the date again? Uh, Saturday the 24th. 24. So, so 10 days away, something like that. It, it, it's a ways away, a couple weeks. And this is really the big fundraiser mm -hmm. for Fisher Catholic. Uh, you're not a state-supported school. No. You don't get state funds. Uh, uh, not that that hasn't gone down and it's certainly been a, a unique problem for the schools too with the way taxes are coming in and things like that. But for you, uh, this is really the big money maker for Fisher Catholic. Yes, uh, our budget actually relies heavily on Bit of Luck, and it's a great event for us. We have, uh, we usually raise in the area of $100,000 net uh, or more from Bit of Luck, and that helps support tuition assistance. Uh, it really just helps support our general budget for the school, and it's, it's, it's almost 10% of our budget wow. uh, comes from this one event. Sure. And, it's been a, a wonderful event here in, in Fairfield County and in Lancaster for a long time, so we're excited. Well, I want to thank, go back to thanking Gord Snyder and his wife some around 40 years ago. They came up with the idea there had to be something out there that they, that, that could raise this amount of money in one fell swoop. They could do this rather than have things all year long. They could do this. So a bunch of people got together. Gordon kind of headed that up, and they've done this. And now fast forward to uh, 40 years later, 50th year almost of, of Fisher Catholic being in business. And, and again, it's a, it's a big part of what you do. And uh, it's an exciting time. Last year, a little bit different. Last year was kind of no man's land. Everything with the, with the group that, that heads up the Bitola Committee, 
uh, had to do this, and it was kind of by the seat of the pants, as so yes. much was yes. last year. Uh, you had to do it online, but I think what you found out was it really worked out well. It, in, in a funny way, uh, I believe we netted more last year online than we had. Certainly had less the, expenses. That, and that's, that's why. Uh, we didn't have the massive dinner. We didn't have the, no. the open bar. We didn't have the party. And it, that was unfortunate. You know, even if we raised a little bit more money, yeah. it was unfortunate. Because that's because, an event. Because it that's, is truly an event. I, since I, you know, this is my third year, and since I moved here, all people talk about is bit of luck, bit of luck, bit of luck. Uh, the Diocese of Columbus will tell you out of their 11 high schools, it's one of the best, if not the best, fundraiser run by all 11. And it's about the community as much as it's about the money. Uh, yes, we raise the money, but it's about bringing 300 people together to have a celebration each year. And so we're looking forward to next year when we can get back to that. Uh, yeah. So that'll be exciting. Uh, talking with Jim Klobuchar, he's principal out at Fisher Catholic. And I remember last year, uh, almost every week something was changing in, in the, the world around us and certainly here. And so I, I know your group started out planning to have that we can still have it and and then it well maybe it can only be not as many people and then some people said well we don't know if we want to come because how so everything was really so unique so now fast forward to now a year later you've got a lot of information in your tool belt now that you can make decisions and I know the decision was made early on this will be virtual mm -hmm. yeah it was um, we, we had the debate again as to whether or not we wanted to um, see if we could do it live this year and uh, back in January we ended up making the decision that we weren't quite sure how things were going to go and we weren't quite sure how comfortable people were going to be in April and so we did make that decision to go fully virtual again uh, for for this particular bit of luck and I'm hoping uh, that the community comes together and steps up just as much as they did last year because sure. that would be fantastic. Sure. And again, it, there won't be this, again, the community event. It was always such a tremendous event out of Fisher Catholic. A Saturday night, uh, just a, a wonderful soiree with a tremendous theme each year and everybody would get all dressed up. It was really an occasion. It would have been super this year too. And that, that's what will make next year unique because everybody will be ready to get back. They were ready this year, yeah. but, but, but not quite yet. But next year, probably everything will be back in line, we hope, and, and it'll be an exciting event. But for those who don't know, this is an auction. They have a grand auction items with a, have some terrific value on some of these items. And then there's some other items they can bid on, but, but now everything will be done virtual and they have to get signed up for this. Correct. Uh, yeah, what you'll do is you'd go on our website, which is www.fishercatholic.org and uh, all the bid of luck information is right there on the front page you just click on it and if you'd like to sign up to register to bid you contact kelly shonk uh, over at the school and she'll get you registered online and then uh, the auction actually starts on thursday uh, with our silent and super silent items nice uh, and then that that auction will run for about uh, 48 plus hours there sure and then that'll close saturday evening and i believe it's 6 30 uh, and you can double check on that, but I believe it's 6.30 that the grand auction starts and that'll run for about two hours, two to three hours. And that's when the real, the real bidding and, yeah. and, and, and we're hoping that uh, people still uh, get together in small groups with their families at home and, and participate and have a beverage and sure. some dinner, just sure. like you would if you were at the actual event and, and uh, have some fun uh, bidding against each other and, for some and, great items. And again, the grand auction items. I think of all the auction items I have in, and I was looking at the list, I have the list here, the current list of things that have been compiled by a bunch of hardworking people on the Bid Luck Committee. Um, $500 or more generally puts you into the grand auction items. So on the event that will occur Saturday, these will be some big ticket items. And I, I always remember some of them, there's always uh, a nice, uh, well, last year, I think, or the last couple of years, it was a nice uh, bourbon trail tour down yeah. through Louisville yeah. and things like that. And one of the big ones I always know is dinner with the priest. That's going to be yeah. a, a big ticket item this year. Oh, yeah. We have uh, actually Father Thompson over at St. Bernadette's has offered to cook dinner for eight at his rectory. Nice. Um, and, and Father Eilerman and Father Colopy over at St. Mary's are also hosting a dinner for eight at the rectory over at St. Mary's. So, uh, we can't tell you how much we appreciate the support of the parishes and the pastors. Sure, um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of fun items uh, that you can bid on this year. Um, yeah. So we have a, a week ski trip, um, oh, always we, <laughs> we, which uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, we have a family sponsoring a, a boat a boat on Buckeye Lake, uh, day on the boat with food and beverage, and uh, 
even the, a fun one this year. Uh, hopefully the Lancaster Festival uh, goes somewhat normal uh, come July. And I know we have a catered table at the festival uh, by Cheers, where they're going to cater for you and, and do all those things. And so, and even front row seats to graduation. You know, last year we didn't really get to have the full graduation, so that's that's an item that I'm sure will be a hot item this year, uh, considering that we will have a normal, somewhat normal, hopefully graduation. Well, and again, coming up in a couple of weeks will be the bit of luck thing. Just go to the FisherCatholic.org. And uh, all the information, there's a link to it. You get on there, get a hold of Kelly Shonk out at the high school, and, and it's all there about everything that's going on. But, uh, but again, when you look back at this year from, uh, let me put your principal hat back on you here, and you look back at this year, uh, do you think it went better than when first, I know things started caving in a year ago, and it, it, it really looked bad. But again, because of the size of the school that Fisher Catholic has, it, it's so different from, say, Lancaster who just doesn't have a room to social distance, you you pretty much, not all the way, but pretty much were able to keep things fairly normal. Yeah, it was uh, one thing, because I know Kelly will want me to say this, if you don't want to bid on anything, you can still buy a raffle ticket. Oh yeah, for let's luck. talk yeah. about that. We gotta talk about the bucks, raffle. hundred bucks, right? It's hundred dollars for a raffle ticket. Get your family members, five people, 20 Absolutely. bucks a piece. Uh, yeah. And it's, the first prize is $7,500, uh, with five prizes of 500. So that's always a hot item, and we always ask, you know, if you if you don't want to sit there and bid through everything and and, and get in the bidding wars, they appreciate you that can, donation. Uh, you can buy a raffle ticket, and that right. gives you a shot at some big money there. But as far as schools concerned, it, it's been it's been great. Um, yes, the kids are a little further apart in the classrooms, and they have masks on. And probably the quietest school building I've heard in my 13 <laughs> years uh, in education. But it's. Um, They've been able to be in class every day. If they weren't in class, they were streaming online because uh, our classes were being streamed online for those kids, students who were quarantined or sure. or, or had COVID. Um, we really uh, didn't have to quarantine too many kids throughout the Great. year. We had a tough month, right. December, January, but other than that, it's been uh, it's been wonderful. So they've gotten to experience, like I said earlier, almost everything that they would normally experience in a school year, um, and we're looking forward to giving the, the seniors that the experience they deserve as well over the next month and a half. When you when you look at how all this has gone down, would you say the young people have been pretty resilient, pretty pretty okay with everything that's gone on? Have they been able to handle this? It amazingly resilient. Wow. Um, you know, it, it, we really haven't had. I mean, yeah, the first couple of weeks of the year, hey, pull your mask up, pull your mask. But other than that, I mean, they have they have worn the masks every day. They forget their mask, they come to the front office, we have some for them. Sure. I mean, they ha have been, for the most part, getting online when they're not able to be in school for whatever reason and doing their work there. So it, it, it's it been as easy of a year as you could possibly have with these circumstances. Uh, and that's credit to, to our students and our faculty and staff for, because sure. it's a lot of work for them. And the, and the parents at home, you know, helping, helping push their kids to, do what they're supposed to be doing. So. so extracurriculars, sports, plays, everything else pretty much online? I mean, pretty much as usual? Yep, we uh, we had to quarantine a couple teams there for two weeks. Um, but other than that, all our teams played full season. So much better than last yeah. year. Oh, <laughs> well, currently right now, baseball, uh, softball, and track are, and tennis are, are all going on, which they didn't happen at all last year. Uh, yeah. They practiced for a month last year and never got to play a game. Well, so uh, we're, rough we're, year. we're excited to have them out on the field, uh, you know, doing their thing. Well, thanks, thanks for what you've done, certainly for Fisher Catholic, being able to keep all that going and keep it, uh, keep it running as smoothly as you could get it. And again, coming up here, what's the date again? Saturday, April 24th. April 24th, uh, starting Thursday, you've got everything going on for a couple hours there of, uh, of all the auction items and everything like that. And then on April 24th at 6 or 6.30, that's what, yeah, that's when the grand, the the grand, grand item stop. Start. You can get yeah. all the information, fishercatholic.org. Just, just go into Fisher Catholic on your search engine. You can find it. Everything's there. Uh, we hope for a tremendous uh, outpouring of uh, really strength in the community for Fisher Catholic and what you do with the, with the education you provide up there. Uh, a lot of opportunities for some great gifts, so uh, we hope it all turns out well. I appreciate you having yeah, me on, Paul. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jim. And uh, it's going to be tremendous with, with the, the whole deal right here. So get online, look it up, get involved. And if nothing else, get a raffle ticket. Make <laughs> Kelly knows we told yes, her that. Get absolutely. the raffle ticket. I've got mine. I hope you'll get yours. Thank you for joining us on Fairfield Today. Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by... 
Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.